Hello and welcome. Today in this video, you will be taken through how to import files into the InLab CAM file uh, when you are working with a third party design uh, software. So when you first come into the InLab CAM software, any machines that are available for you to utilize, so for example, the Prime Print or even the Serac Prime Mill now show up in InLab 22 CAM. You'll see just below, there's also the item where you can import items. So let's say, for example, with Prime Print, I plan to import an item. Uh, I can find when I hit import items, this option will come up. Now, if I'm looking for a CAM specific file, that means it's a uh, integrated file. So coming from InLab or Cyric, the CAM file would look um, as such. However, when you use this drop down menu, you'll see that there's a few other options. So you'll see STL files is available, ExoCAD construction files are available, and as well as 3Shape design files are available. So if I go ahead and I select STL, when I come in to find my STL in question, I can select open here and I can basically bring this in. Now you will always get this uh, kind of warning, okay, from an STL file. Obviously it's not produced in the dense place running ecosystem. So it's just letting you know that some of the automation from an integrated perspective, you will lose that data. However, we are still able to work with this file, of course. So I select okay here. And then I have to identify a couple key uh, details for the actual software to proceed forward. So I'm able to fill in anything here that I wish to. So if I have a specific dentist or patient name I'd like to put, I can. However, the most important aspects here are the items with the asterisks. So for example, if I've got prime print selected as my manufacturing uh, method, I can then look at what type of materials do I want to work with. So if I'm selecting item type as a bridge, which this of course is, the material name, I'm able to identify what I would like to utilize. So let's say I'm printing this in the prime print temp material, I can now select prime print temp. Now the next step is for me to add additional information. I can either get to it with the arrow here or just by selecting additional information in this next step. Now for items like uh, restorations, you know, bridges, crowns, whatever it might be, it's important that the system is able to identify where the margin is, right? Just so it knows kind of where the key uh, elements are on this restoration. When you have an STL file that is considered raw data, so it's important for the software to kind of know some of those key traits uh, before proceeding forward. Um, so at this point in time, I'm able to identify things like my margin if needed. So under the tools, I have the ability to identify some key functional areas. So if I want to identify where the supports are forbidden, I can just mark around my margin, okay? Because obviously we do not want the uh, item to fill that in. Uh, the carve out tool, so obviously areas where it's going to be hollowed out, I can identify them as such here. So I'm just basically holding my cursor in the intaglio surface. and then I'm able to proceed forward, okay? Um, so that's the additional information that I can provide to the system in terms of what's needed for an STL file. And now at this point, I'm ready to proceed. So as soon as I'm back on this screen here, I can see all my existing files and I can see the file that I've just imported here. It now knows what machine to use, what material to use. Uh, and then of course, what the actual item uh, name was. Now you'll see that the fast forward tool has become available. So I'm able to identify, if I do want to identify the color, so let's say I want to use a one for this particular case, I'm able to either manually move forward, in which case I can manually control, you know, where the supports are going to go, things like that. However, if I want to proceed forward with the fast forward option, obviously the system doing a lot more of the automation for me and optimizing the way it's actually positioned on the build tray, then I'm able to proceed forward as such. But this has essentially been the workflow of how you import an STL file. There will always be additional information needed for certain types of files that you are importing. But then once you have this here, we can see that it has not positioned 
uh, any of the supports on the actual intaglio surface uh, or the margins and things like that. So it's clear um, from that um, those areas that we controlled with the additional information step. Uh, so if I was actually connected to a printer here, I'd be able to proceed forward with preparing the actual uh, cartridge in the material carrier uh, and as well to proceeding with production. So this has been the workflow for how to import an STL file or other file types to the InLab CAM in preparation for manufacturing. Thank you so much for joining and stay tuned for more videos.